Hey readers, writers, and storytellers, my name is Hannah, I publish as H.S. Paisley, and today we're going to talk about four romance novels, well, four and a half, that I read end of May through June. Okay, the villain hitched the wedding date? No. The wedding party and Born of Night. So in the beginning of June, I read Five Little Indians by Michelle Good and holy moly, that was heavy. I've already posted a review about that. After that, I needed some fluff and I really, really like reading black authors and black romance novels. And I mean, I shouldn't say I really, really like it. I'm, I'm making it more of a focus. I, I like it as much as I like reading any good romance novels. And The Wedding Party was the third book in a series, The Wedding Date. And I can't remember why I didn't want to read the first two. And I got this one out from the library. I have a library card now. I'm saving so much money. Get yourself a library card. Ooh, maybe that should be my new outro. Get hydrated, get a library card. We'll see. Anyways, I picked this one. I can't remember why I picked this one instead of the other ones, but basically the wedding date, the wedding party. Shit. Basically, the wedding party follows these two characters, Maddie and Theo, who have the same best friend, Alexa, and Maddie and Theo hate each other. They've always hated each other, and guess what's gonna happen? They fall in love. Now, I made a goal a few months ago to review on my channel every book that I read and write a review on Goodreads for every book that I read. I do not want to talk about this book. Oh my gosh. So because I don't want to talk about it and I've already written the review, I'm just going to read you guys the review because I'm trying to hit my goals here. Both Maddie and Theo are in Alexa's wedding party and then they have their whatever whatever romance. Okay. I think romance novels with this heat level are not particularly for me. I want my romance novels bordering on erotica, and this was not it. The chemistry was lacking, the characters were self-righteous and annoying, and I felt like this book was trying to tick a lot of boxes. I, I'll elaborate on that point because um, I, I appreciate that this book has not the traditional uh, romance novel body types, but that was shown to me by not describing their body types at all and having them like continually <laughs> order pizza at every opportunity. Like these are not healthy people, you know? And I think that you can be healthy and carry more weight than what is societally deemed like attractive or right or whatever, totally. Like there's a difference between being healthy and being skinny and a lot of skinny people are not healthy. I get that. The amount of pizza that these guys eat, like they're not living a healthy life. Like their knees are pissed at them. It drives me crazy when characters don't have to take responsibility for their actions. The main couple have the same best friend. They are sneaking around behind their back because they don't trust her not to overreact. When the big reveal happens, she isn't upset with them. And this actually drove me bananas. I go on later in the review uh, very briefly, so I'll, I'll expand on that, that basically like <laughs> Maddie doesn't want to tell Alexa because she doesn't trust her not to overreact and make a huge deal about her and Theo being together. And in the book, Maddie has put this arbitrary end date, like they're gonna get each other out of their system for the wedding. So as soon as the wedding happens, they don't ever have to be around each other anymore and they're just gonna go about their separate way. And she justifies this because Theo is an asshole to her. But in thinking about, like we see their interactions, we get told about their past interactions and he was not an asshole. Like, like they were equally assholish to each other and Maddie never takes responsibility for her actions. She is just horrible and judgmental and always gets apologized to and that drove me absolutely crazy. And then when Alexa finds out about her two best friends boning for the past several months and lying to her about it, it's no big deal. And I get the idea of wanting to wrap everything up in this bow at the end of the novel, wanting Alexa to just be happy for them. And I think that if there was another reason behind why they weren't telling her, I could have been on board with that. But the reason was there was a lack of trust that Alexa would respect Maddie and Theo's boundaries. And like, not cool, man, not cool. I wanted to love this book. I really, really did. I want to love all books that I read. And I just really, really didn't. The Wedding Date by Jasmine Guillory. 
Two stars. Another book I got from the library was Hitched. Super short and it was a volume one. And I wanted something light and fluffy and easy. Holy moly, this was it. I gave Hitched four stars. Three stars? Three and a half stars. I gave it three and a half stars because it was super, super short and like very predictable, but fluffy and fun. And I was into that. The narration was good. There was a male narrator and a female narrator. And the story itself was like <laughs> absolutely ridiculous, but it's a romance novel. I'm not here for realism. Basically, these two guys had this huge company together. And in order for their children, the main characters, the main couple to inherit it, they had to get married and produce an heir to make sure that the company always stayed in the family. And so the book basically is about the guy wooing the girl girl and getting her to get married and and getting her over her last relationship or whatever whatever I'm not gonna talk about this book for very long because it was short it was fluffy it was fun it was easy it was sexy I liked it oh I also really loved that it was in volumes I think that's super fun because a book that might be three or four hours long in four volumes showing like four different stages of this relationship between the two people like I'm so here for it but when I started listening to volume two they changed the narrators. I don't know why. So instead of having a male narrator and a female narrator, they had one guy who wasn't the first guy. It was a different guy. And he was narrating both parts. And when I was auditioning narrators for my novel, Magic Required, because I just used the same ones from the first one so I didn't have to audition anybody for the second one, one thing that I was very surprised at was that some of the narrators gave Lachlan's spoken lines an Irish accent, as I asked them to, but his thoughts were unaccented, were like a general American accent. And I thought that was so weird. Like, why would he not also think <laughs> in an accent? And so in the volume two of Hitch, this male was reading the female perspective and he did a voice for her when she was speaking, but didn't do a voice for her when she was thinking. So she thought like the dude. <laughs> It was so weird. I didn't finish it. I might read it, like I might actually buy it or, or see if I can get a physical copy from the library or something and read it because it was fun. I did really enjoy it, but the narration was horrible on the second one. So I, I mean, I don't even want to rate it or read a review yet or anything because it was so bad and I didn't finish it and it has nothing to do with the author. So yeah, three and a half stars for the first volume of Hitched by Kendall Ryan. And no rating yet on the second one because I haven't finished it and the audiobook was horrible. The next book I'm going to talk about is Born of Night by Sherilyn Keon. And this one I also got from the library, which was great. The narrator was the same narrator for Janine Frost's The Night Huntress novels, which I loved. I've, I've listened to those books many, many times. So it was interesting hearing a narrator do a different voice because she did one of the same voices from another book. And I'm like, hey, that's Bones. <laughs> So I, I don't know if you guys are audiobook listeners, if you've experienced that, but it was interesting, but she's a great narrator, so she did a great job. I, I can't remember her name, though. Born of Night was fine enough, I guess. <laughs> it was a weird book. That said, it has over four stars and some... 25,000 reviews on Goodreads. So a lot of people really like this book. So I think that like if anything about this book appeals to you, I would recommend you reading it because it was fine. It was fine enough. Like I enjoyed it. I didn't love it, but I didn't hate it. It was fine. This is a futuristic romance novel. And part of the reason why I thought it was weird is because the future setting has no relevance on the plot. Like it doesn't really change the plot. And the romance is like, okay. <laughs> But most of the issue is that there's so much going on. Our story starts with Kiera, a galactically renowned dancer with a high-powered political father who has been kidnapped because politics. So she's being like held for a ransom or something. She gets rescued by this ragtag group of outlaws and one of them coincidentally is obsessed with her as a dancer. Q Nikirian, dark and brooding half human, half something that maybe eats humans. Born to be an assassin, but he has a code. And one day when that code is tested, he leaves his League of Assassins to try and survive on his own and starts this ragtag group of people that saves the dancer girl who he then falls in love with. The weird part about this book for me is that it was all over the place. In story, and in how it was told. This book was told in third person open. So we were jumping from head to head to head, which like 
was cool sometimes, but also was like a lot to kind of follow along with the story being like having so many moving parts and the setting, the futuristic setting, I just like forgot until somebody got in a spaceship and flew to another planet, you know, like it didn't really have that much relevance except making the scope of power of Kiera's father and this like league of assassin people more because they were controlling like a galaxy, I guess. Really the only reason I was able to completely follow this plot from start to finish is because it was so predictable. But that said, if you want a futuristic romance with some mystery elements, and there were some like cool moments, then try Born of Night. I didn't love it, I didn't hate it. It was fine enough, I guess, and I give it 2.5 stars. The last book I'm gonna talk about is The Villain by LJ Shen. And last month I read The Hunter by LJ Shen. That was book one of the Boston Bells. I think there are four novels because there are four bells, four girls. And this was the second one and I, I tore, I devoured The Hunter. And I was so ready. <laughs> to love the villain. And I think you know where I'm going with this. It fell a little flat for me. So basically this main character, Persephone, has this crush on this super billionaire, asshole, broody guy, Killian, for no reason whatsoever. Like he doesn't even look at her when they're in the same room. She just loves him for no reason. When he rejects her, she marries the next guy she meets. Literally the next guy that shows any interest in her, she marries him. <laughs> Weirdly, he's a dud. It doesn't work out with that guy. Not only is he a dud, but he leaves her with $100,000 of debt. And instead of going to her two best friends, who are both multi-millionaires, she goes to Killian to ask to get bailed out from this... <laughs> this debt. And at the time, uh, Killian's younger brother, Hunter, who is now married, settled down, has a baby on the way, is challenging him as kind of like the leader of the family because Killian's sole goal in life is to produce a male heir to take over this huge company that they have, that the family has. So he thinks, I need a wife and, and cue Persephone, can I have $100,000? So Killian goes, yeah, yeah, I'll buy you. Sure. <laughs> now don't get me wrong, like I enjoyed this novel, again, enough. The ending of it was much better than the beginning because for what felt like the first two thirds or three quarters of the novel, Killian is just ignoring Persephone. And this, this idea of like Killian being this like Hades kind of dark broody guy and Persephone being Persephone, like the retelling of this myth is, is quite sloppy. And Persephone's like whole goal in her relationship with Killian is to change him. And I didn't love that. <laughs> I think this story would have been better served if Killian like more actively wanted to change and for whatever reason, Persephone was the one who was resistant. Like I think that would have been a better retelling with a twist as opposed to it just being a modern Hades and Persephone because they even reference Hades and Persephone in the text. Like the characters are talking to each other like Killian is Hades. Okay, guys. One of the things that I thought was so interesting, and maybe this says more about me than the author and the readers, is that part of why Killian is so like dark and dangerous is that he hires sex workers on another continent because his kink is so depraved, you know, that he has to go to another continent to find what he wants. And uh, we learn what his kink is. <laughs> guess, guess what it is. You'll never guess, you'll never guess. He's a dome, that's it. And, and like, like kind of a vanilla dom. <laughs> As I said, the myth retelling was a little sloppy. The characters didn't have a ton of chemistry, mostly because we never saw them together in any healthy way for most of the novel. And I'm 99.9% .9 sure that you shouldn't marry somebody with the sole intention of changing them. But maybe, <laughs> maybe that's just me. 2.5 stars. I mean, LJ Sheen. Am I gonna read the next one? Yeah, probably. <laughs> it wasn't bad enough for me to not want to read the next one. I'm gonna read the next one. But it was nowhere near as good as The Hunter. I'm like, I want to reread The Hunter. I'm never rereading the villain. <laughs>
But let me know what you guys thought if you've read any of these books or if you have any great romance novels to suggest to me. I really love dual perspective stuff. I really love steamy steamy romances. I really love retellings when they're done well and not Beauty and the Beast. Not that one. Anyways, I hope you guys are all happy and healthy. There is a little bit of romance in my novel, Magic Required, if you are looking for a new read. Let me know if you've read any of the books I talked about today or my book. And I hope you're all happy and healthy. And I mean, I'm assuming you're all hydrated, so go get a library card.